Hey guys, it's Sabri Angel. Welcome back to the channel. And, uh, well, we're going on a fun little adventure today in something stupid. Remember the Got Friends pack for the beaver? Well, it does stuff to this too. Yeah. We've got an amphibious DC-3. This feels ridiculous and I want to fly it. So, we are flying today from Innisfall in Australia, up in Queensland. And we are flying through to Tinaru, which is just to the north of us. And, uh, this should be an interesting trip. So, without further ado... Let's get this pig started, shall we? And I do have a little help here. I'll link to this mod in the description. It works for both the there's two versions for the Beaver and for the DC3, and it will help us. All right, power on. Mags are technically on. Okay. Throttles are good. Props are good. Mixture's good. Mixture to on. We'll go down here real quick. Not here. To here. Excuse me, out of the way. Out of the way. I'll go left main. You go over here, you go back there. Okay. So that's ready to rock and or roll. Pretty sure we are otherwise good here. Let's make sure my correct lights are on. Okay, we are good in that regard. Okay, transponder's good. Okay, everything's looking right here. Booster pumps are on. So we're gonna get ourselves ready to go. So right engine energize. Let's get ready to give this thing a good pop. Give it a few seconds to warm up, about 15 normally. That's what we go for for this beastie. Does it want to bite? There we go, we've got a bite. Okay. Uh, energize left. Here it's spooling up on the outside there. Give it a few seconds to get ourselves started. Okay. It's not even meshing. Why aren't you meshing? Come on. Come on, give it a good kicker. Give it a good start. There she goes. There she goes. Okay, ooh, let's uh, bring this old girl to a stop for a second. Open the windows. The booster pumps are off. Engines are idling. Okay, let's get ourselves ready here. So my, oh, hello, my head's just risen up significantly there. Okay, so we do have map power up here, which gives us a nice, useful tablet. And if you really wanted to fly with your head up here, you could use Synth Vision as well. But we'll be using the map functionality for this. So we need to take off from runway 1.4 today, because we've got six knots of wind from 1.37. So this should be relatively easy. Let's get ourselves turning. I do not know where I got this scenery for Innisfall Airport. That quickly just check something here, turn my brain off. Pretty sure I do not have the parking brake set. But I don't know. It feels like I'm requiring that much power to go. There we go. Okay, now we're moving. I'm pretty sure one four is over there, so we've got to do a little bit of back taxiing here. This is one of those aircraft you'll really need differential power for. Oh, this is a big girl. <laughs> it feels so weird taxiing a DC-3 and having this much visibility over the nose. Maybe that's why I feel like I'm so high up. 
because right now I feel like I'm on top of the world. Okay. So we're into the active here. We're looking for the one to our just right over there. Should be runway one four. Okay, let's turn this pig around. Use a lot of differential thrust here to get it to steer. And toe brake, because I'm pretty sure these are free castering nose wheels. <laughs> this is a big, big aeroplane. Let's look at this thing. Yeah, it's a chonker. This is a DC-3. This is insane. The nose down actually feels so wrong. Alright. We are good here, so we'll taxi down to the end, turn around, and we will depart for Tinaru. Now, one of these does exist. I believe it's in Florida. They weren't exactly a common thing, but they, it does exist. And it definitely makes, uh, if we were doing for something like FS Economy, for example, and you had lots of... Uh, weirdly enough, FS Economy has huge contracts for jobs into seaplane bases if you're flying in Alaska or British Columbia. All well and good, except these massive cargo jobs don't really work very well for most seaplanes. Because, you know, you can't exactly get into these spots. Whereas, this would do it. Come on, let's turn around. Little bit of brake, not much though. Full right engine almost. Okay, right. Flaps in. I've never taken off in this before, so this could be a real experience for us. Coming up to power. Here she goes. Looks into that drone. I'll be quiet for the rest of the takeoff so you can enjoy the sound. gear in transition there on the floats. Okay. Let's close that as well. Little bit quieter for us. Right, quickly check up here. So we're flying directly opposite the direction we want to go. Turn my head back on again. Probably should stop doing that. Oh, hello. Losing speed there. Alright, let's get the nose down and start turning around here. Build some airspeed up. These things impart quite a lot of drag. So it's something to be aware of. Because we're still pretty slow here. Let's get these flaps coming up. It's still a big beast. There we go. Power's back. Props back as well. Airfield down below is on our right. And if I'm correct, come round towards that large mountain ahead of us and we are on course. And then we'll hopefully start building some airspeed. She's not a climber in this configuration, that's for sure. Alright, let's get this nose down. The trim is quite sensitive on this aircraft, but this is definitely a unique variant. I'm looking forward to landing on the water at Tinaru. Technically, it's not a water airport, but it's a big lake. So we'll be landing on the water there. There we go. We're picking up some speed now. Still in climb power, because we're just trying to gently take her up here. Nothing too nuts. There we go. Bring that power back to 35. We'll bring it back to about 30. Maybe just below that, once we're cruising. Keep our instruments in good check. Ooh, I forgot to open these actually before... Uh... Before takeoff. You want those full open for takeoff actually. 
Let's look at our temperatures on the uh, the car bear. In fact, those need to go up all, all the way. That should start coming down now. Pretty sure those are open. Yeah, those are wide open. I always get very unsure about the direction I'm flying sometimes. Okay, so that's what we need to head for. Airspeed is nice and solid. Bring that power back to about 30. As so we're kind of on routing here. RPM is a little uneven. There we go. Even those props out. So RPMs are equal. It's more like it. So we're still climbing gently here. Uh, obviously, yoke somewhat in the way. Hard to, in fact, see. I forget what the click spot is for this stupid thing. And the click spot to bring it back is something like... I completely forget. It was around here somewhere, and I remember finding it last time, but now I have no idea where it is. We'll fly with it off today. We don't need to see it, but uh, we are on course just a little bit here. Now, this is the classic version with a little bit more modern help in a more realistic way. You've got a, a tablet with a moving map software attached to it. These exist. These work. It's like Garmin Pilot. Useful to have. Uh, Make some of these planes that don't have the equipment much, much more useful. I'd love to see the developer of this mod do it for a number of other aircraft. Uh, the 152, for example, has no modern navigation system in there. Now, when I fly 152, I have a GPS in there because airspace. Britain has incredibly dense, packed airspace, and if you go into the wrong area, you get fined and you get in trouble. So, I usually keep a GPS there, not necessarily for the magenta line, but more so I can see where airspace is. When you set up the right zoom, you'll see the airspace around airports, and you can never get around it if you want to, because it's far less hassle. Yeah. All these sim pilots running around being like, oh, I'm going to transition through the Charlie. Oh, I'm transitioning through the Class Bravo. Yeah, trust me, it's more hassle than it's worth sometimes. You fly around it sometimes. Yeah, you'll go through it, but when you're not trying to get somewhere in a hurry, it's far less problem just to go around. Especially the busier it is. The busier it is, the less you want to go in there. Okay, we're still climbing here. A little off course to our right, but we can correct that. Are we getting an airspeed reading on here? No, just our bearing. But if I was to switch to 3D vision, as you would see here, we are 153 somewhere. That's pretty bloody quick. Okay. Bring it around here. Bring the power back a little bit more. About 25 inches. And we're passing through here in no time. Now, if we look on here and zoom out. Destination's not too far away. About a third of the way there. So cross these mountains, deal with a bit of this, and uh, we should be good. Give it a bit more power up to about 30 while we climb here. Let's get ourselves across this uh, range. We'll get a bit of wind and turbulence here. Flying on real world Aussie weather, so it's summertime right now in Australia. So all the bogans are outside getting their uh, suntan on. We'll trip to the Buffalo, get themselves fueled up for uh, summer barbies. Don't worry, I'm not going to make that cringy American reference. I know you all just drink beer. It's fine. Ain't nobody putting shellfish on any kind of uh, fire. Oh, maybe they are, but... No, I have a good few Australian friends who are wonderful, wonderful crack. Absolutely love him. I'm way less miserable than my Kiwi friends. Maybe that's saying something. The Aussie friends are always way more entertaining and way uh, more positive than the people down south in Hobbitland. Maybe it's the weather. Unless sheep. Either way. Tinaru shouldn't be too bad. We've got a lake there. We've got winds of 8 knots from 115. So we'll have to be a little bit more considerate where we're landing. Uh, we should be able to land 
right into it if I remember the lake's layout correctly. So we should be good there. So one, one, five should be kind of down the lake, which we'll manage just fine. I have no idea how this is going to handle the water. We are going to learn that together, absolutely. But uh, should be relatively safe. There's been some cracking releases lately. The uh, Vision Jet. Not only a jet person, but really like that one. Fun little beast to fly. Really enjoyable little aircraft and uh, a bag of enjoyment. Now, I've been told now by two separate people they want me to shut up more during videos, so... I will give you guys a solid minute of pure DC-3 engine sound. Well, it was mostly a minute, but you know how hard it is to keep an aeroplane level in uh, turbulent conditions when it's like Flappy Bird? Yeah, it's not easy. Okay, so we're even on course still anymore? We're not even on course. But we are getting considerably closer, so we shouldn't have too much trouble now. Okay. Get out of this valley, head over the highland, and we should be approaching Tinaru. And then we get to work out how to land this beast of an aircraft. It shall be a science experiment together. But I tell you what, if you want a chunky bush plane that lands on the water, this might be just it. And it's growing on me. Hopefully we'll see some patches for this in the beaver with some maybe some official tweaks to improve certain little bits and pieces, but uh, this needs more than the beaver. In general, though, it's not bad. It's growing on me. Uh, it's well done enough. I would have liked that the, the modern GPS quick cockpit had a more modern instrument layout like one still flying today do rather than the 1930s instruments with a GPS slap next to it. It feels very out of whack. I almost prefer flying the classic version here with that, because it gives me the convenience of modern radios, modern uh, navigation systems in a vintage aircraft, in a discreet way that you would do to a vintage aircraft. Makes things far more enjoyable. So, uh, speaking of which, let's use that little uh, autopiloto here. So we've got a few knobs. The pitch angle, we've got pitch hold, we've got gyro pilot power. So power's on. I'm pretty sure that's going to be holding my pitch. Is it zeroing out? Yes it is. So we could basically assign it a heading hold which is fairly easy. As we go down to here, desired heading, we're on uh, current heading is 299er. So we want to be looking at uh, 299 about here. Heading hold. That's going to take us a little bit to the left here. Let's just wiggle that up a notch. And it shall line us up. And boom. We'll be on a roughly direct heading to Tinaru. So if we want to go up here, for example. We can command it to pitch up. We've got our pressure gauge there, of course. So we're commanding a pitch of about 5 degrees or 500 a minute there. So we are 
Mm, okay, just about climbing, but not much. The turbulence is not helping the gyro pilot keep up. It's not really a system designed with this in mind. That's not the lake, I don't think. Although it could be. Actually, it might well be. It's the actual first arms of the lake there that we're arriving to. So we're coming over to Nauru and for 1-1, one, one, uh, we're going to be pretty limited on directions for 1-1-5. One, one, because that's going to put us roughly on this kind of heading here. So this section here might be wide enough. We'll have to taxi up there. I don't know, looking at the lake, if we'll get there, how big that's going to be. Whether we'll have enough room to land across here. But uh, we're looking at almost a back course landing, so we'll be on the downwind sort of shtick for us right now. Because we're looking for about this heading here from our relative position. So we'll be just off our relative course on a back track. So it'll be about this way. So we're looking almost straight across the lake there. So I'll have to see if we actually have room when we get here. We should. It's the first uh, spurs of the I it's a reservoir here that we'll be landing in at. Piratinery. We should be just coming up the crest now. I've still got climb power applied. Let's pull that back to 25. Maybe knock it down to 20 here. Should be still good as gold. Plowing along very nicely. This old girl is uh, a performer when you want to. The actual realistic cruise power settings are quite low compared to what you'd think they would be, given that my red line's up there at 47, 48. We've got quite a lot to play with. It's pretty, uh, it's good bound wind, so eight knots will be good because it will give us at least a reference of wave direction and uh, that will break up the surface, that's an important thing. Really calm wind, uh, calm days when it comes to float flying are really bad because calm days equals very flat water, called glassy water, uh, makes judging your distance to essentially a mirror very hard. You get a bit of wind, you'll get some waves. Obviously too much waves, problem because you'll start landing on waves, uh, but when you've got a bit of, a bit of wind action it'll ruffle the surface quite a bit giving you a decent way to judge your altitude to the altitude to the water best thing to also do is to use the coastline next to you so we're oh man we're absolutely in here right now so let's knock off the autopilot that will be uh tinaru right there okay so let's try and get ourselves down here and take a look at what we've got to work with this does not look that wide so I may have to improvise as we come down here. I've got a bit of altitude to play with here, so I'm going to put my carb heat. Carbs are still good. We're still hot, in fact. Australia says no, so I'm not even going to put the carb heat on while I pull the throttles back here. Conditions are very warm. Alright, so... Currently 210 at the moment. So I'm thinking we might actually have a chance to land across there. That might give us an opportunity here. We'll see what this does when we come around. I'm going to pop the window open here. What a bit of DC3 sound as we land. Bring her around and down. Love the wind noise we're getting. Yeah, we're going to be able to do this. We're just going to have to land across the lake here rather than too much around it. So we're going to fly to our right here, then we're going to bring her round and down. And it should be good. Airspeed's a little on the low side there. Don't think we have water rudders on this, but we have differential throttles, which gives us the ability to steer. So it's going to be a little less precise, but we'll make it work. Okay. Props full fine. Gear is confirmed up. Give us some juice. We'll bring around and we'll start to look at our setting up our landing approach. So we're slow enough here for flaps. Three pumps there. Bring it up to half flaps. 
Look at how much that nose gets pointed down there. We have to be very careful of our pitch and attitude here because we're not used to being flat and level with this aircraft. So I'm going to be very selective with my approach. This is my first time landing us on water, so this could go horribly wrong. I'm going to keep it about 110. There's the lake. There's one of the dams. So we're going to aim to come in over the dam there. Let's get the nose down here. Bit of rudder. Bring this old girl in. This is our heading here. That's what we've got to work with. So power's idle. We're gaining a lot of speed here. We should burn it as we level off. We may not, but the dam is our heading. That's our good landing direction here. Oh, we're definitely gaining too much speed at the moment. But we've got a lot of wave action, which is good. We can see the water surface really well. Come on, burn this speed off, baby. Come on. You big fat clown shoes, you should burn this off in no time. Okay, we're losing speed now. Okay, straighten the rudder out. Okay, Let's keep my nose about this attitude. This feels about right for what we're doing here. I don't want to have the entire tail of the float hit the water first. But I want to keep them just after flat. And we're down. Give it some rudder now to turn us more to the north so we miss this island. Okay then. Oh, look at that. Now that's what I call a nice landing effect. <laughs> Water spray, we've got wake. That's good. That looks stunning. And we made it. And we do have water rudders. Fancy that. But we also have differential throttles. We can do this. Look. Look, Mum. No rudder. Oh, there we go. Now we're going to have the stick full aft here as we're going to do a little bit of taxi. So we're going to plow taxi here. Keep the stick full back. Keep the tail of the floats in the water. We should get a bit of rudder authority. So we take her up towards Tinaru. There we go. Let her forward and ease her onto the step. I'm not going to go any faster than this. A little bouncy. Ease it forward. That's quite bouncy, actually. Let's pull the stick back here. Dig the tails in. You know what? Screw Tinaru. I actually quite like this little island here. So we're going to bring her up to the uh, shoreline just in front of us where there's a gap in the trees there. All left or right engine. Bring the nose around. Bit of left engine. It's a nice thing about the quick response of big piston engines and these massive props grabbing the uh, air. We can get quite effective quick steering out of them. Surprising this isn't a float plane, although it's not the most aerodynamic. Not when they had flying boats at this era. It made no sense to make a float plane DC-3. Try and keep this thing straight rather than counter steering constantly. Tinaru is that big red lump ahead of us, but that looks kind of boring when we flew over it, so... We've got more here. Why not? Bring her into the shallows. it. Keep her coasting. Now what do we have here options wise? We have amphibious floats installed, open passenger door. We need to get someone out to uh, help us unload. Bring it forward. Come on, that's it. Bring it forward. 
yeah, not the most maneuverable aircraft when you're actually trying to dock, but not terrible either. So now we'll just uh, bring the nose round. And bump her up against the uh, shoreline. This would be a pig to push back into the water, wouldn't it? There we go. And of course, in the sim terms, this has bumped us up onto the ground. Yeah. <laughs> we are slightly moored. But you know what? This will do. This will be a pig to push back in, so we won't. But that was fun. I really enjoyed that. That is a blast to fly. Weird to fly. But enjoyable. And gives you a massive float plane option to fly in this sim. It's kind of strange, but I like it. Is that wrong? Yeah? I really think this is kind of fun. Although getting into that from the float would be a bit of a mission. You're getting wet unless someone's got a boat right underneath between the floats. Uh, well, thanks for watching, folks. Uh, see you next time. Have a great weekend. Bye.